The pharaohs and their tombs have long captivated both the scientific community and the history enthusiast. Stories about their mummies and their curses have been around for years and have their place not just in museums but also in scary movies and children's cartoons. Throughout three millennia, about 300 pharaohs ruled ancient Egypt. Yet almost all royal Egyptian tombs have been broken into by thieves. The tomb of Tutankhamun is one of the most fascinating discoveries ever made that created an international sensation. But it wasn't an intact discovery. It had been looted twice in antiquity, and Howard Carter estimated that a considerable amount of jewelry was stolen. But another discovery of royal necropolis, including three Egyptian pharaoh's tombs intact with their gold and silver treasure, was made about two decades after Carter found King Tut. Then why hasn't the world heard much about it? What mysteries does it contain? And what does it reveal about ancient Egypt? Welcome to Crunch. In today's video, we will see what treasures archaeologists discovered inside the intact tombs at the Royal Necropolis of Tanis. In February 1939, the world was on the brink of World War II. Far away from political turmoil, French archaeologist Pierre Monte was excavating in the Nile Delta for his 11th season. Monte was trying to tie together archaeological evidence of Old Testament scripture. In previous seasons, he had already unearthed the remains of a huge temple dedicated to the god Amun in the ancient capital of Tanis, but Monte suspected that there might be a burial site hidden within the parameters of the temple complex. His theory proved correct in more than spectacular fashion when, after 10 years of effort, he found the royal necropolis of the 21st and 22nd dynasty pharaohs. Much remains unknown about the enigmatic pharaohs from the Third Intermediate Period, but the unbelievable treasure that lay within their tombs in Tanis was only rivaled by one from the tomb of Tutankhamun. What Monte found was a complex of royal tombs, and some of these tombs held more than one burial chamber. The first tomb, NRT-1, was built for the 22nd dynasty pharaoh Osorkon II and is dated to somewhere around 850 BCE. Osorkon was buried in a massive granite sarcophagus with a lid carved from a Ramesside era statue. It was also the last resting place for his father, Takilot I, who had been reburied here in a pilfered sarcophagus from the Middle Kingdom era. Also, a very obscure pharaoh named Shoshank III was laid to rest here. Even though all of these burial chambers had previously been looted in antiquity, some priceless discoveries were made. They were still dwarfed by what came next when the adjoining tomb NRT-3 was opened for the first time in over 2,500 years. The burial chambers discovered in NRT-3 are the only known intact royal pharaonic burials to date. The inscriptions stated that the tomb was built for Susens I, but the first coffin Monte discovered in the antechamber belonged to Pharaoh Shoshank II, until then a name completely unknown. So the discovery indicated how much there is still to discover about ancient Egypt. It was a spectacular falcon-headed solid silver coffin containing a large number of high-quality bracelets and pectorals. It was found surrounded by the remains of the mummies of Susens II and Suiman. All three of these kings were likely relocated to this tomb after their original tomb was flooded or damaged. Because of the moist environment, the Nile Delta did not have the same preservation capabilities as sites further south. As a result, the Tanis mummies were in poor condition, and many of the funerary objects that were not made of metal were lost. However, what remained was quite magnificent. Almost a year after finding the Tanis royal necropolis, Monte came to a corridor sealed by a huge granite stone, made from a part of an obelisk of Ramesses II. It took six days before Monte could look into the burial chamber of Susens I, and it was filled with marvels worthy of a thousand and one nights. A huge stone sarcophagus that almost filled the chamber was covered in hieroglyphs. The lid weighed 1,000 pounds, and inside was a solid silver coffin that was nothing like anything else that had ever been unearthed in Egypt, even considered priceless because of its rarity. Inside the silver coffin, Susanes was buried covered with a gold mask, six gold or lapis lazuli necklaces, 26 bracelets, and two pectorals, all of these also considered priceless. 
The large necklace weighed eight kilograms, made of thousands of individual gold pieces. One can compare it to the 10 kilograms used for Tutankhamun's mask. Each lapis lazuli necklace weighed 10 kilograms, the main gold necklace 8 kilograms, and a gold bracelet nearly 2 kilograms. Could Susanes even move if he wore all his jewels? Susanes's sarcophagus held another clue to the third intermediate period Egyptian politics. On it, the Egyptologists found a cartouche belonging to Meremta, son of Ramesses the Great. Menemtah died 150 years before Susanes came into power. Research showed Susanes was given Menemtah's sarcophagus as a gift and had his signature added to it. This strategic act solidified his family's association with historical greats for eternity. There are puzzling aspects of the Tanis treasures. On the one hand, we are talking about the Third Intermediate Period. It is supposed to be ancient Egypt in decline. The tombs discovered were small and rather pitiful, built with fragments taken from temples, colossal statues and obelisks. The stone sarcophagi belonged to earlier kings. Objects were found bearing the names of previous pharaohs, like Amesu and Ramesses II. Yet the Tanis kings were heavily decked in gold and silver. For the ancient Egyptians, gold was regarded as the flesh of the gods, while silver was thought to be their bones. Unlike gold, however, silver was not readily available in Egypt and had to be imported from abroad, perhaps from Western Asia and the Mediterranean. This meant that silver was a commodity of even greater value than gold. Thus, Susanes' silver coffin reflected the wealth that he commanded. In addition, the metal objects found in the tomb, including the silver coffin, were extremely high quality, indicating that Susanes also commanded the manpower needed to produce such luxurious items. The wealth and power of Susanes may be attributed to his remarkably long reign, recorded by Manetho, to be either 41 or 46 years. Some Egyptologists even suggest that Susanes reigned for 51 years. Given that Susanes reigned during a period of political instability, the length of his reign is indeed impressive. Considering this fact, as well as the wealth of objects in Susanes' tomb, it appears that the situation in Egypt during the Third Intermediate Period, at least during the reign of Susanes I, should be reconsidered. Amazingly, even though this discovery was one of the greatest archaeological finds ever made, it would largely go unnoticed for decades to come. During battles, there were other priorities, and the fact that the publication on the excavation was only made available in French was not very helpful in drawing attention. But now, after more than 75 years, we are ready to re-examine this magnificent treasure. Now, a team of scientists including Dr. Silema Akram, Dr. Fauzi Gabala and Dr. Peter Lakovara has taken a second look at the pharaoh's 3,000-year-old remains, his treasures and Montet's excavation notes. What do you think of this discovery? Leave us a comment below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching Crunch. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video.